In this video we want to consider what's meant by employee voice. Employee voice is a concept of employee participation. Employees have the right to voice any matters concerning their employment. Of course they have the right to to raise these matters providing there is a mechanism or an agreement between them, the employees, and the employers. So there must be a communications channel within which the employee voice can be heard. The concept gives employees the opportunity to influence management decisions and play an active role in the organization performance. So the concept of employee voice means that the employees can be involved in the organization more fully. They're not simple functionaries performing particular tasks. They have an intelligence, they understand the organization, they understand the product, they understand the production methods, the processes of the company, they understand the issues of the company at quite a micro level, which is very important and they're able to feed this back to management and their voice will be listened to. So it's for them to make a representation regarding the pay, conditions, health, safety, remuneration, holiday entitlement, all of the issues that uh, face the employees and their voice will be listened to. The concept can be applied individually and collectively for example, in terms of grievances and disputes, collective bargaining, uh, democracy agreements between trade unions and employee representatives. So the concept applies in many areas, as I've suggested in the previous point, but we could look at it in the context of grievances and disputes and collective bargaining, also issues associated with health and safety, um, remuneration, holiday entitlement, uh, pensions. It can cut across the whole range of issues that uh, confront management when dealing with a workforce. And in this case the employee voice means that they are listened to, that the, the management listen carefully to what's been said and take on board some of the points or engages in a dialogue with the, the workforce to discuss the issues that are raised. Employee voice is a powerful tool which gives employees decision-making authority. If it's fully implemented the employee voice would give the employees the, the capacity to make decisions. Now these decisions may apply to uh, their particular uh, part of the, of the organization or the, the particular processes in which they're involved. So the employees are able to make decisions regarding layout perhaps or the, um, the, the particular work processes that are undertaken by them in conjunction with associated technologies and so on. But they, are, they have the capacity to make the changes that's the point. And the point is, as a consequence of that, they are more involved in the organization. They have some degree of authority over their environment, their working environment. The employees have the ability to influence decisions made by the employer. They may be able to feed up recommendations to the employer regarding the future direction of the business or the design of the product or suggestions for improvements or innovations or changes to the working processes. So they're a valuable source of information and recognized as such by the employers. So the employers take on board the opinions and the comments of the employees and the employees are able to influence decisions made by the employer. Employee voice uh, plays a role in both employee participation and employee involvement. These are two concepts and we'll look at each of them. Participation, well uh, employee voice is centered on employment contracts and matters affecting employees. 
So it's it's looking at issues which will involve the participation of the employees. So it'll look at contracts, for example, and the extent to which contracts enable the employees to be involved and to participate. And it'll look at all the issues surrounding the employees as to whether they participate in the organisation. In other words, participate in the sense of uh, being involved, being committed, making recommendations and making suggestions and refining ideas and being consulted. That type of participation. There's also the issue of involvement focused on management and organisation initiative to uh, improve workplace performance through employee engagement. Trying to get the employees involved in their work, involved in the, the life of the business, trying to get them involved uh, so that they relate to the business and are more motivated as a consequence. More motivated, of course, being more productive. So uh, the employee voice plays a role in both of these to try and get the employees involved. Marchington uh, in 2001 uh, provided a framework for employee voice strategies. So here we can see it as uh, four, four parts. The top one a shared agenda, the next is uh, or the, the bottom one logically from that would be the contested agenda and then we have direct involvement and indirect involvement and we'll see what each of these mean in a second. So with a shared agenda we have two-way communications. We have the employers talking to the employees, seeking opinions and making recommendations and uh, designing policies that relate to the employees but the employees also reciprocating and making suggestions and refinements and putting forward ideas to the management. It's a two-way process. It's a shared agenda. The contested agenda is trying to resolve issues relating to conflict. When there's a dispute between the two sides, there's a contested agenda and they're trying to resolve the, the issues. Then in the indirect involvement, it will be the individual who will relate to, let's say, the trade union, and the trade union will then link to management. So the individual does not deal directly with management, the individual deals with the trade union and the trade union deals with the management, so it's indirect. And obviously the direct one on the other side would be the individual dealing with management directly, no involvement of a trade union. Now in between these we have this idea of partnership agreement. So we have a shared agenda and we have indirect involvement. So it's it's trying to design some sort of agreement between the two parties. It's, it's a partnership agreement. With the indirect involvement and a contested agenda there may be something, uh, an issue between them related to remuneration, uh, conditions of employment or some issue of the related to the work contract or some issue, some dispute and there's an issue for collective bargaining. So with partnership agreement there is a shared agenda that both management and employees are working together and communicating effectively and there is an indirect involvement that the individual deals with the trade union who deals with management but there is a, a broad understanding and agreement between them, a partnership agreement. In the case of collective bargaining there is some issue, some, some problem and the, the union and management will sit face to face and negotiate and try to resolve the, the issue. It's a contested agenda. With a grievance procedure it could be a contested agenda and the individual deals with management and there is a grievance. The, man, the individual has a grievance and will invoke some grievance procedure that is set up by the HR department. 
and employee involvement is when there is direct involvement with the individual with management and a shared agenda so they're they're working together the individual employee and the management have direct contact and there is two-way communications between them so there is employee involvement and this is the framework put forward by Mar Marchington uh, in 2001 now Marchington's uh, framework focuses on on two dimensions of voice individual employees and collective group for example trade unions and employee representatives so there are two types of uh, dimensions here dimensions of voice the, the the voice can be individuals or the voice can be collective employee voice and involvement may be direct in which uh, employers communicate with individuals and groups so it's a direct contact between employers with the individuals and the groups and indirect in the case employers communicate with trade unions and representatives so indirect as I said is is when the individual links to the trade union and the trade union to management that's indirect the individual is not directly linked to management is only linked through the trade union that's indirect direct is when the employers communicate directly with individuals or with groups of individuals now the idea of a shared agenda well it focused on the improvement and management of organizational performance uh, both sides agree as to what is ne needed and what's necessary to improve uh, the organizational performance it's in both interest of the employees and management to have a successful organization one that survives because both depend on it for their incomes both have a vested interest in the organization this is a form of problem solving uh, promote two promote two-way communication between employers and management so the shared agenda requires on both of them being able to communicate and initiate the communications so the employees may come up with an idea and contact the management they have initiated the contact and they will discuss the the issue it could be the management comes up with an idea and contacts the employees it's a two-way process there can be downward uh, communications uh, this is important in order to inform and instruct staff and meetings and uh, have meetings and uh, team brief team briefings so downward communications is important this is where management uh, send down their ideas down to the employees uh, it may cascade down in the sense of go through various layers of management to line management down to the employees or it may go direct it depends on what the communications channels are but it's important that the employees are informed about what the management is thinking there can be upward communication uh, involves employee feedback opinions and suggestions for example suggestion schemes quality circles surveys and interviews it, these are mechanisms or or processes that enable the employee to feed back up to the management their ideas and the management should take those seriously and see what what issues arise out of them so the shared I uh, agenda idea uh, must have communications channels and the channels can be uh, two-way or should be two-way for a shared agenda can be downwards and upwards the contested agenda well uh, focused on trade unions uh, trade union associations and representatives resolving issues related to conflict it's when there are issues between the management and the employees that need to be resolved uh, if they're not resolved it could escalate and become a serious problem could eventually end in strike action withdrawal of labor and closure of the business for example employee dissatisfaction 
uh, employment contract, grievances and collective bargaining. In fact, the contest, con uh, contested agenda can be on many different issues. Uh, it could be remuneration, holiday entitlement. Um, it could be the uh, seen as the attitude of management. Perhaps some members of management, uh, perhaps line management, are aggressive or uh, are, are too forceful in their their dealings with the employees, and that could be the basis for a dispute, leading to problems that need to be resolved. Now, methods applied for representative participation. Well, collective representation, uh, trade union associations, uh, procedures involving collective bargaining, dispute resolution and grievance procedures. So collective representation means that groups are involved and the groups speak on behalf of, let's say, the workforce. Um, but it's applied to try and solve some problem some issue. There could be joint consultation, arrangements of meetings with management and representatives concerning employment concerns and shared interests. Joint consultation could be um, a forum in which the employees and management meet to discuss issues, not necessarily uh, big problems but perhaps issues which could become problematic in the future or in the near future. And joint consultation means that they're able to meet and discuss the issues and perhaps get a resolution before it escalates. Methods applied for representative participation. Well, uh, European work councils, arrangements for meetings between two member states. Well, um, the European work council idea is for uh, reconciliation bring the sides together, trying to uh, provide a framework of good practice and example to try and bring together different sides in a dispute. Partnership agreement, formal agreement between management and employees regarding mutual interests. It, it could actually be a, a proper partnership agreement that's agreed between uh, uh, employee representatives and the management so that the there are if you like permanent channels of communications and consultations and uh, uh, warnings about changes in policy and briefings and discussions and uh, it, it's a it's a partnership agreement both sides are working together Employee voice is an important concept. Employees either individually or collectively have the right to voice their concerns and express dissatisfaction. So it, it enables the employees to have a voice within the organization. Uh, the employees are stakeholders in the organization. They depend on the organization paying them a wage or a salary. They need the, that resource to enable them to function in life, to pay their bills and to to function. So they have an interest in the organization and they have an opinion about the direction the organization is traveling, uh, what the, the corporate strategy is, uh, issues surrounding the layout of the plant, the type of product, the design, uh, the, the managerial style. They've got opinions about many aspects of their working lives and employee voice gives them an opportunity to express their concerns and express dissatisfaction and also some assurance that they're going to be heard and taken seriously by the management. Employees have the opportunity to partake in decision making resulting in a more committed workforce. They contact the, the management over issues and they know that what they say will be carefully considered 
that may be debated with them they may be taken into meetings and discuss the issue and um, the logic of their recommendations and their issues uh, discussed it may be done on an individual basis it may be done between management and a group of employees or done between management and the trade union representatives but the point is that the employees have an opportunity to have an input into the organization and as a, as, as a result of that they are more motivated within their place of work uh, improved communications between management and employees um, a drive towards a common goal and shared interest so both sides have an interest in negotiating talking having contact sharing ideas and and even through disputes perhaps there is strength there are opportunities for the management and for the employees to have a better organization as a consequence of disputes and resolving disputes it perhaps clarifies it clears the year it clarifies some issue and and enables work to go smooth in the future the employees will be more committed the organization will be better run because there is better communications channels and there is less likelihood of conflict so employee voice means this it means involvement it means being taken seriously by management it means the employees being more engaged in their in their work more content that they have a voice in the organization and more respect on both sides management and employees that's all we're going to deal with in this session there are some of the uh, sources and let's leave it at that for the moment and say thank you for watching